So I want to talk about ketogenic diet and sugar. You know, I follow diet trends. I'm always on a diet. And that doesn't mean I'm trying to lose weight. I did that back when I was 19 years old and I lost 125 pounds and have kept it off. And the way I do that, you know, there's nothing really magical about it. I started eating real food. And I find today that I've actually switched my metabolism. Even though I'm much older now, uh, I have a problem with keeping weight on. So I'm one of those few people that bought a bathroom scale just to make sure that I haven't lost three or four pounds and I need to eat more. So I go through all the different diets and everybody should be on some sort of diet, whether it's ketogenic, paleo, or one of the, just a standard whole food diet. And by that, I mean that they should be aware of what they're actually putting in their body and they should have a goal of just feeling as vibrant and alive as they possibly can in relation to their food. And this is what dieting really is about. Most people don't ever think about their food other in terms of taste and calories. And generally that crowd falls prey to all the different additives and sweeteners that are put into food to mask the fact that it's really cheap and poor quality. And then they're not getting good quality food for their cells. And believe me, if you're not feeding your cells, there's no sense eating. Ketogenic's the big craze these days, and it's basically a diet that's based mostly on fat and switching your metabolism over to burn a type of fat called the ketone. Uh, your body will make ketones naturally just from skipping calories and then breaking down your own body fat. It'll go to your liver and then that fat will be turned into a ketone and it's a special type of fatty acid that your, that your brain and your heart can actually use for energy. So it's a great diet to switch into, especially if you're having blood sugar problems because you're not consuming hardly any calories from carbohydrates in the ketogenic diet. It's really based on 70% fat about 10 to 15 percent protein and maybe 10 percent carbs and if you're really getting into ketogenic meaning that you're on the medical ketogenic diet then it becomes even more strict you have to cut back on all your calories in total so that you can go into a full-on state of ketosis now that type of ketogenic diet is really more for medical reasons like epilepsy seizures and mostly cancer is what it's used for today and it works it's a great diet for that I myself feel like the medical ketosis is way too strict for the average person it's not that hard to get into what they call nutritional ketosis which is where your ketones are just slightly elevated and you have low blood sugar and then your body can switch between using one or the other for energy and so that's a more healthy approach but when you look into diets like I do, you start to realize that even though there's a broad range of different types of diets, and the ones that are popular today are the fat-based ones, uh, there's not much difference really in a fat-based diet, a paleo diet, and a nutritional ketosis diet. They're just varying degrees of the same thing. All three diets are based on the idea of lowering the amount of blood sugar, regulating it, and consuming enough calories from fat and minimal protein to actually kick in your metabolism to burn fat. This gives you a whole different energy source. It's also very good for mental clarity because most people who consume way too much sugar have an issue with insulin resistance, meaning that their cells cannot take up sugar they're rejecting the signal from insulin. So you can get a little brain foggy from that. And if you switch your metabolism over to fat, it gives your brain cells a new energy source. And in the beginning, that can be very uplifting and give you a lot of mental clarity. But again, all three diets, to a varying degree, are based on getting sugar out of your diet and regulating your sugar. And there's no single better thing you can do with any diet you're on than regulating your blood sugar. If you can keep your blood sugar down to a really good range, and I'm talking between 80 and 90, you can pretty much skip almost every chronic disease that you develop later in life and put yourself into a zone 
where you've lowered your chance of getting a stroke or a heart attack. So what's better than that? You know, regulate your sugar, pick a diet that works for you, base it on real foods, and you'll be so much better off in the long run.